Hi, brothers and sisters in Christ. It is November 2nd, I think, Thursday. I'm going to reinforce the dream I had a little more clearly that Revelation 17 and 18 is what my dream very clearly was. Obama and the ten kings who have all drunk from these cups of filthiness and abomination and wickedness. And God puts it in their minds to fulfill his will that they will burn Mystery Babylon in judgment in an hour. Her destruction, her desolation will come. These are among all the kings of the earth, but these ten kings that have not had power at the time John was writing the Revelation, but will have kingdoms and power and authority this one hour, so to speak, to give their all of it to the beast Obama. That's why I saw a long bar with bar stools to drink from the cups. Abomination, filthy wickedness, give double to her for what she's done. Give her double, fill her cup double. And they sat so closely packed together, you couldn't put a piece of paper between them because they are of one mind, it says. These will be of one mind. Okay, and 17 and 18 are, whoa! I want to tell you, where I live in the Bible Belt, we've said it many times, it's very lukewarm, very worldly, even in a small, poor town, but real faith at times, real faith and love for the Lord and the Word of God, and I just experienced both. There's two little restaurants in La Follette. Um, neither one loves the Lord the way they should. You can tell it, you see it. However, there are individuals in one. So I stopped by, one for a biscuit, tried to share some of these things with people. One was like, oh yeah, I know. Winked the eye and did like, like, yeah, that's not very serious, but okay. She knew about the war in Israel and that these are the end times, so I left that there. I said, good, yes, amen. And then I went to the other restaurant where I've had beautiful encounters, not with the owner, but with some of her staff. And what I didn't know was one young woman, I told two older women and one young woman who were in a little cluster about my dream. I said, this is really happening you know the Lord said and they're like yes so then you can talk to people when they know the Lord said you can talk then you can pour out his spirit dreams and visions all over the world people are hearing from the Lord so I told them this dream and they understood and even the young woman was like praise the Lord praise the Lord you know we've been talking about this everybody was getting chills they'd been talking about it at church um the times anyway that's good so I, I reinforced with her Psalm 91 because the younger woman thought like, we're just going to get out of here. Hey, rapture, rapture. And her mother was like, <laughs> the mother was lovely. She's my favorite person in the entire town. And she said, no, I'm, I'm going to be fine when I see it all because I know these things have to happen and, and he's righteous. Okay, so praise the Lord. And all you can say is you don't know when this is going to happen, but it's going to happen suddenly in an hour. And the point is, if we are being shown, and so many people are, not only that Obama is the Antichrist, the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, but now, like, these things happening on top of Israel, what's going on, but when the ten kings are lining up with the beast, it tells you the destruction, and therefore, of course, Armageddon, which we know can only be a handful of years off, when they will make war with the Lamb. That's part of Revelation 17. Okay, so I'm so excited, and I am shouting it from the rooftops, and I even told the owner of the first restaurant, and his dad, who stood by, and a little bit of like, oh, mm, okay, and then back to whatever. In fact, the old man even said, you know, people say stupid things, like King James was kind of that way, and he knew that was false. That's good. He, he said, yeah, Satan's going to spin all that stuff, anything to detract from the truth of the Holy Bible. So anyway, just that little report. Last thing to mention is, unintentionally, I went on Halloween to a mall. I never go to the mall. I hate the mall. I hate shopping. But I really needed a few things, and they were the best place to accomplish it all. It turned into a couple hours, I don't know, of witnessing amidst the little bit of shopping. And I found some real fertile ground and then various soils. But the thing is, where it was fertile. <laughs> um, that was very exciting because it was a woman 
who also is married to a man who is like the way you ought to be, the head of his house in the Word of God. They both know what's going on. We spoke scripture. I'd had a dream like that once with a sister in Christ as we were driving in a car that a sister was driving and I was in the passenger seat and the whole conversation was the Word of God doing that. So that was beautiful. But the other thing that happened at the mall was a devil in uh, the body of a young man in his probably 20s because it was Halloween, which I forgot, there were various employees of the mall or stores in the mall wandering around in costume, except his costume was as Jesus Christ with a crown of thorns on his head, a white robe and crimson sash. So I was avoiding looking at all the nonsense of Halloween, but when I spotted that out of the corner of my eye, I slowed down to give that character a chance to catch up with me. And when he did, I kind of tested a little bit to see what kind of mentality this person was of. He was smiling. And I said, so uh, why are you dressed this way? And he kind of lost the smile and didn't say anything to the spirit in him. And I said, you have no right to be dressed as my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as the rest of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said it both ways in the conversation. So I said, you have no right to be dressed that way as the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, if you had the Holy Spirit, if you were born again, you couldn't possibly you would cringe like mine cringed when I saw you. And I said, pointedly, this is a day of devils and demons. It's wicked. And then he got his big smile back and he said, oh, it's not about devils and demons. It's just a day for kids to dress up. And he sauntered off. So that was, I thought, the end of that. But I mentioned it to a woman even a little older than I am who I encountered and she was bristling. She was so indignant. She said, I'm going to go tell management. And I hadn't thought of that. So I put things in my car and I thought, she's right. So I went to find the management office. And it didn't go well because they don't really care. But among the security people I was speaking with, lukewarm, possibly cared, another one possibly cared a little, but eh. And then there was one security guard, I think also young 20s. Um, either Middle Eastern or Indian, he didn't know the Lord, so I noticed him actually paying attention. And I think it was probably like, what is this lady so upset about? So when I realized that, I kind of zeroed in on him, and I told him the gospel. And it's like when I saw this recent video of um, an Arabic man in someone else's street preaching video. He was the big teddy bear guy whose cousin looked all cool, but the teddy bear guy was big and he didn't know actually the whole story about Jesus. Many people have only heard a tiny bit, but not the actual truth of the gospel. And in that video, I remember his face when he heard Jesus, he, he died for others, for, for sins. He was blown away. Well, this young man made me think of that. He was looking at me intently. So I spoke to him, the gospel of Jesus Christ, Christ rose from the dead. He's coming. This is judgment to call upon his name and read the Bible. So all in all, it was a good day that way. But the very last bit is as I finally left the mall, quite a long time after my encounter with that horrible character in the white robe and the sash and crown of thorns, I, had, I walked out of the mall to the parking lot and I heard a big voice behind me going, have a great afternoon. And I looked back and it was him. He had like noticed me. It's a big mall. And he was right there as I was leaving. So I turned around and saw who it was. I don't know if I should have rebuked, you know, the spirit come out of him or what. All I said was, the Lord rebuke you. Repent. And that was it. He went back in and I, I drove off. Someone else I know is blessing people in Jesus' name and getting a lot of interesting results, so I don't know. All right, God bless you all. I just had to share all that. Praise the Lord. The King is coming. Amen.